and will probably lead to some confusion and even frustration. My advice is be patient, ask questions, and remember that the other guy comes from a different culture and may even have trouble recognizing things that she already knows very well. Finally, I would say this opportunity here, especially for young people, there are no experts. You say, surely there are experts in complexity theory. Well, yes, but most of them know nothing about black holes. There are experts at black holes, but most of them know next to nothing about complexity. And by the way, that includes me. The subject is too new to have developed a standard canonical way of thinking, and therein lies the opportunity. We have 10 minutes before we actually start. My plan for the next 10 minutes, which Scott has suddenly decided to back out from, but I think we can get him to do it anyway, was to, um, well, for a couple of us, to suggest a couple of concepts, simple concepts and words, just explain some words from one side of the aisle, left side or right side, who's left and who's right? This is left or right, I don't know. But uh, from one side of the aisle, that may help the people on the other side of the aisle understand some of what's going on. Just a word or two that, uh, that might uh, be helpful. Uh, so I was going to ask Scott to say a few, a word or two from the complexity side that might help physicists. Not a seminar, just a word or two. All right, all right. I, think, I think my word is theorem. Theorem? <laughs> theorem. <laughs> What's that? It's <laughs> uh, uh, something like you say is true, and then you explain why it's true, and then you put a box. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That was a business. <laughs> Anybody else have something that they want to explain that might be helpful to the other side? <laughs> I have one thing I would like to explain very quickly. It's um, a concept about black holes. Most of the black hole physicists know about it. Um, I will say it for the computer scientists or the, or the information people. A black hole is a fast scrambler. That's a term that, uh, that's come up in uh, the context of, um, of black holes. And what is a fast scrambler? A fast scrambler is a system which, if you knock it out of equilibrium by a local perturbation, by local perturbation in something that involves only one or two qubits or one or two degrees of freedom, it will return to equilibrium, meaning to say, that the perturbation will get lost among all the degrees of freedom in a time which is only logarithmic in the entropy of the system, logarithmic in the number of degrees of freedom. That's fast. That's much faster than an ordinary um, system will come to equilibrium. And what it indicates is that the dynamics of the system has a particular character, what you call k-local. K-local meaning to say the Hamiltonian involves sums of terms each of which involves a small number of terms, but somewhere in the Hamiltonian you find any two qubits or any two degrees of freedom coupled together somehow. That's the idea of a fast scrambler, and it's an idea that permeates a lot of uh, what people think about black holes now, and so I bring it up now just as something that um, uh, the, uh, the um, information theory people might find surprising. In particular, the horizon of a black hole is not organized in a way that the interactions are local in space. They're k-local. Everybody talks to everybody else, but in small pieces. Anybody else have a concept that they want to um, that they want to share with the other side that might be useful? Yes, sir, Charlie. Uh, the word complexity is uh, unfortunately used in many disparate ways. <clears throat> And amongst the, of the people who talk about uh, uh, computer science or uh, information theory way, it uh, re can refer to uh, what would, what, for a physicist, the analog of entropy or the analog of dynamics. So in the entropy question, there's, there's the theory of, of, al the theory of algorithmic 
information that is also called, called Gorham complexity, which has nothing to do with dynamics. It has to do with counting states and with coming up, as you in your steam engine analogy, with a, a property of an individual state, which why, why do you say states? I would have said the algorithmic complexity has to do with the, the size of an algorithm. Well, it has to do with the size of the input to a fixed algorithm yeah. that causes it to produce a certain right. size. So it, has, it, it is really much more like entropy. Uh, it's minimal program size for the probability that a computer, given a random input, would produce exactly that output. Uh, that's what al al algorithmic information is. And in a way, if, when we spoke of the steam engine, uh, it, entropy is, is, is a property of a probability of distribution. But you said, well, temperature or, or energy is not like that. It's the average of some microscopic quantity. So algorithmic information or, or, or columnar complexity is the quantity whose average is the ordinary statistical entropy or Shannon entropy or Coleman entropy. So that's one kind of complexity. It's an entirely different kind of complexity is the thing that's analogous to the number of steps of dynamics or to the time required for a mixing process to take place. And that is, for a computer scientist, the number of steps of a, of a Turing machine or, a, a, or a, of an array of gates of elementary steps in which you sort of force a, a, a tensor factorization in the Hilbert space into what you call local function parts. Uh, and the, the, the universality there comes from the, the, the the uh, strong church Turing thesis that says all of these reasonable models of computation can simulate one another in polynomial time. And uh, the theory of computational complexity includes complexity classes that are way larger and, and functions that are uncomputable and are to whom the, whatever mixing can go on in a black hole is, is, is kindergarten stuff, right? Okay. Uh, by the yes, way, no, that, that, is, that, is, that is extremely on target here. Uh, it's helpful. I, I always thought that Kolmogorov of complexity should have just been called algorithmic entropy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Some people well, I would have said yeah, yeah. Okay, so the little I know about it, I would have said yeah. that, uh, that entropy in that sense is an ensemble average of Kolmogorov. That's exactly that's right. So, yes. Yeah. Or, or you, you would say that Let me ask statistical the entropy yeah. is, the, is the ensemble average of algorithmic entropy. Yeah. yeah. I, I read a wonderful paper of Wojcik here on, uh, on uh, thinking about statistical mechanics in terms of algorithmic complexity. And I recommend it highly. What? What? This is from the 80s. It's 89. 89. It's, Great it's, paper. It's, it's ancient. It right. may be yeah. even even more confusing. Uh, there's another kind of uh, entropy. They call it the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy, which is actually a measure of a dynamical measure. <laughs> it's a rate. I was thinking of two two words, uh, uh, four four words, in which to distinguish them, we have to know both how they're spelled and how they're pronounced. And the, the pronunciations are lead and lead, and the spellings are L E A D and L E E D. Yeah. Yes, sir. Four words. Thank you. You were going to. You're yeah, always, so you're always very helpful. Go ahead. Well, okay, I'm not that. <laughs> so, I, yeah, so one one thing which I think we oh, yeah, uh, that we the high energy theorists know, but so far haven't been able to explain to computer computers, inform information people or or to ourselves in a language that would be good for them, <laughs> is that um, one the world is Lorentz invariant, <laughs> and two, time time translation is the gauge symmetry. Uh, yeah, I think I mean, those are these are two very fundamental facts about the universe, essential in high energy physics, and we essentially just ignore them in this field. Uh, and you know, I, I feel like that has to change. Do we have a do we have a short explanation of the time of the gauge? Okay. You should you should put the time of the gauge. Right. That's the problem. First speaker, if I'm not mistaken, is you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Welcome you. 